Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Future TV. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's top stories. Army Commander General Jean Ahwaji urges France to speed up the delivery of weapons to combat Islamist militants in Arsal as two more Lebanese soldiers are killed during overnight clashes. Future movement leader Saad Hariri reiterates staunch support to the Lebanese army in its battle against terrorism while Saudi King Abdullah pledges to speed the delivery of military assistance to Lebanon. And a 72-hour humanitarian ceasefire brokered by Egypt goes into effect in the Gaza Strip, with Israel pulling its forces from the Palestinian territory on the 29th day of the offensive. Two Lebanese soldiers have been killed during overnight clashes with, around, around Arsal with Islamist militants after three members of a delegation of the Committee of Muslim Scholars were wounded as they tried to mediate a ceasefire. A Lebanese army statement identified the fatalities as Captain Dani Fuad Khairallah and Private Ali Muhammad Khdaru. The latest fatalities take the overall death toll from the four days of clashes to 16, with more than 86 wounded and 22 missing. Future movement leader Saad Hariri has reiterated staunch support to the Lebanese army in its battle against terrorism, rejecting attempts to cover up for Hezbollah's engagement in the fight raging in neighboring Syria. Hariri said the army's battle against terrorists is the battle of all the Lebanese who believe in the state and its institutions. He added, we will be a strong political aid for the military, despite all skeptics and attempts to meddle with minor sectarian interests. The March 14 official hailed the cabinet led by Prime Minister Tamam Slam, expressing support to its decision to end the turmoil. Following an extraordinary session held at the Grand Sarai, the government on Monday announced the mobilization of all its political and security agencies in defense of Arsal in the face of the flagrant aggression. Saudi King Abdullah has pledged to speed up the process of delivering military assistance to the Lebanese army under a Riyadh-sponsored deal with France. This comes hours after the army commander General Jean Ahwaji urged Paris to quickly deliver the weapons. In a phone call with former President Michel Sleiman, the king voiced his country's support and backing of the Lebanese army to confront terrorism while condemning acts he said were not related to Islam or human values. He also stressed that he was determined to speed up the implementation of the exceptional support for the military pledged last year. Ahwaji had earlier urged France to speed up the delivery of weapons under the three billion dollar deal stressing their importance in ending the dangerous clashes with militants in Arsal. Ahwaji warned that the situation in Arsal was hazardous, pledging to continue the fight against the militants to free the 22 missing soldiers. U.S. Ambassador to Lebanon David Hale says Lebanon could count on Washington's continued assistance to the Lebanese army, facing what he described as unprecedented threats and praised the military for its work in insulating the country from regional turmoil, Speaking after his meeting with Prime Minister Tamam Slam, Hale reiterated U.S. support for the army and security agencies in their work to secure the borders, protect Lebanon from terrorism, and insulate the country from regional conflicts through dissociation. Um, well, I just met with uh, Prime Minister Salam, and of course the United States has been following the situation in Arsal very closely. Uh, the Prime Minister just briefed me on the latest there, and of course I saw General Kawaji directly on Sunday morning as well. Uh, throughout, and certainly this morning, I reiterated uh, United States support for the LEF and for all of Lebanon's security services in their work to secure Lebanon's borders, to protect Lebanon from terrorism, and to insulate Lebanon from regional conflicts through the dissociation policy. The United States commends the bravery of the members of Lebanon's security services, and particularly the Army, as they confront these unprecedented threats they have all of our confidence and sympathy. Obviously, though, condemnations and moral support, are, while important, are not enough. Our assistance program with the LAF is longstanding, it is ongoing, and it is helping the LAF to meet this challenge. We are in close consultation uh, with our partners in the LAF, and we are committed to further efforts to build up the capabilities of the Lebanese security forces to counter terrorism and to address other challenges. Lebanon can count 
on continued American support for the Lebanese army. And thank you very much. In similar remarks, the UN Security Council has backed Lebanon's military action against armed groups, but urges it to stay out of the conflict in neighboring Syria as Beirut vowed no leniency for the terrorist killers. The Security Council called on Lebanese politicians to preserve national unity and refrain from any involvement in the Syrian crisis. Uh, I have just had the, the pleasure of uh, meeting with the Prime Minister, uh, specifically in relation to the, the situation in the region of Arsal. Uh, some of you may have seen the uh, statement I released in my current capacity also as acting UN Special Coordinator, condemning the uh, violence, the killing of uh, security personnel and indeed uh, a number of civilians and obviously pledging support for the sovereignty of Lebanon uh, at this difficult time. I could do no better this morning than to draw your attention to a statement that was agreed quite late last night Lebanese time by the United Nations Security Council um, which, and I'll cite various passages and leave copies of this, if I may. It reads, the members of the Security Council condemned the attacks by violent extremist groups against the Lebanese armed forces and internal security forces in the area of Arsal. They extended their condolences to the families of the victims as well as to the government of Lebanon. The members of the United Nations Security Council expressed support for the efforts of the Lebanese armed forces and the internal security forces in their fight against terrorism and in preventing attempts to undermine the stability of Lebanon. And they reiterated the need to further efforts to build up the capabilities of the Lebanese security forces to counter terrorism and address other security challenges. Uh, the members of the Security Council reiterated their full support for the government of Lebanon and urged the Parliament to uphold Lebanon's long-standing democratic tradition and work to ensure that presidential elections take place without further delay. They appealed further to all Lebanese parties to preserve national unity in the face of attempts to undermine the country's stability. That's, uh, those are a series of quotes from a longer resolution, uh, a state press statement, I should say, adopted by the Security Council last night. Thank you. Seven Lebanese soldiers have been wounded as their bus came under gunfire in the northern city of Tripoli following overnight clashes which claimed the life of an eight-year-old girl. Nine other people, including four Lebanese soldiers, were also wounded. The army says it is hunting down the attackers. The clashes broke out when gunmen tossed stun grenades, stones and Molotov cocktails at Lebanese army positions. The fighting renewed this morning after a cautious calm following the clashes. The roads which lead to the impoverished neighborhood of Babatabani and the highway that links Tripoli with Akkad remain closed. Lebanese forces chief Samir Jaja has warned that the clashes between the army and terrorists in Arsal could spread to other areas in Lebanon. In a speech at the immigrants' annual meeting in Mahrab, Jaja said, the security situation in Arsal is very dangerous, even if it is isolated. Jaja reiterated that Hezbollah's involvement in Syria's war caused the gun battles, which started on Saturday, after the army arrested a suspect who admitted to belonging to Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front. He stated he backed the army, but soldiers will continue to come under attack as long as Hezbollah holds on to its plans in Syria. Despite his warning, Jaja urged the Lebanese not to fear the developments in the region. A 72-hour humanitarian ceasefire brokered by Egypt has gone into effect in the Gaza Strip, with Israel pulling its forces from the Palestinian territory on the 29th day of the offensive. The truce brought relief to millions on both sides of the border and halting the soaring death toll in Gaza, where at least 1,867 people have died just minutes before the truce took hold. 
Both Israel and Hamas engaged in a display of firepower, seemingly determined to have the last word before downing their weapons. On the ground, medics went into previously inaccessible areas, with worse devastation near the southern city of Rafah, which had been flattened in a massive Israeli assault that began Friday. Elsewhere, people were slowly returning to their homes. They had fled after being ordered out by the army. Saida Warsi has resigned from her position as a senior minister in Britain's foreign office, saying she could no longer support the government's policy on the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Warsi, a baroness who sits in Britain's upper house of parliament, became Britain's first Muslim to serve in cabinet in 2010, but was later demoted to be a senior minister of state at the foreign office and a minister for faith and communities. While the British government has repeatedly called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, Prime Minister David Cameron has come under criticism from the opposition Labour Party for refusing to describe Israel's actions as disproportionate. Last week, Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond said the situation in Gaza had become intolerable. And coming up next, a senior Japanese scientist embroiled in a stem cell research scandal apparently commits suicide more after the break. Welcome back. Forty children from northern Iraq's Yazdi minority are reported to have died as a result of a jihadist attack on the Sinjar region. This is according to UNICEF, which says the children died as a direct consequence of violence, displacement and dehydration over the past two days. Fighters from the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant jihadist group that controls much of the northwestern Iraq took over Sinjar, which had been under control of Kurdish troops. Turkish police have launched a second wave of raids at police officers' residences, detaining at least 25 officers suspected of conducting illegal wiretaps. This is according to the country's state-run television, which says police teams stormed police lodgings in Istanbul and in 13 provinces across Turkey, and police had warrants to arrest 33 people. Last month, police detained more than 100 officers in similar raids for allegedly spying on and tapping the phones of Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan and other officials. Most of them were later released, but 31 were jailed pending trial over accusations of illegal wiretaps and forging documents. Libya's new parliament has elected Agula Salah Isa, a jurist from the eastern town of El Kubba, as its speaker as a session at a, ses at, at a session held far from the clashes rocking Tripoli, the political newcomer defeated Abu Bakr Biara, who had presided over Parliament's inaugural session in, Rana in a runoff. The anti Islamist Parliament, elected on June the 25th, traveled all the way to Tobruk, 1,500 kilometers from Tripoli, to take the oath. MP said more than, more, more than 160 of the 188 elected members were present in Tobruk. World powers congratulated the new parliament and voiced hope that lawmakers would be able to restore stability to Libya and press ahead with democratic reform. And in Africa, with health care systems in the West African nations overrun by the epidemic, governments are scrambling to stop Ebola from spiraling out of control. Many health centers in Liberia simply shut down as medical personnel have become too afraid to turn up to work. More than 60 doctors have already died of Ebola, hampering efforts to control the outbreak. The World Health Organization, which warned last week of catastrophic consequences if the disease were not controlled, reported 61 new deaths as the disease continues to spread. Iranian judicial officials say Arson, at a central Iranian prisoner, killed 11 inmates. Sources say Monday's fire broke out in the Shahr al Kurd prison, killing 11 prisoners through suffocation before being brought under control. Iranian news outlets said several people were also injured in the incident. An investigation is underway. And in Asia, a senior Japanese scientist embroiled in a stem cell research scandal has apparently committed suicide, according to police. Yoshiki Sasai had supervised and co-authored stem cell research papers that had to be retracted due to falsified contents. A security guard found him suffering from cardiac arrest with a rope around his neck. He was pronounced dead two hours later. And still in Japan, the Owl Cafe in downtown Tokyo has anywhere from 20 to 30 owls.
that visitors can touch, pet, and even put on their hands. The cafe is for those looking for their own owl experience, in par with the world of Harry Potter, a fantasy book series written by J.K. Rowling, which endows owls with magic power. Started in 2012, the cafe has now long lines of people waiting to register for a 60-minute time slot to have coffee, tea, or even beer with the birds. Despite the long queue, most visitors are prepared to wait for what is it worth, for what it is worth. Customers need to spend around 20 US dollars for coffee, tea, and soft drinks. The owners say they take the owls, the owls every night in case the owls bother neighbors by hooting at night. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Army Commander General Jean Ahwaji urges France to speed up the delivery of weapons to combat Islamist militants in Arsal as two more Lebanese soldiers are killed during overnight clashes. Future movement leader Saad Hariri reiterates staunch support to the Lebanese army in its battle against terrorism, while Saudi King Abdullah pledges to speed the delivery of military assistance to Lebanon. In a 72-hour humanitarian ceasefire brokered by Egypt goes into effect in the Gaza Strip, with Israel pulling its forces from the Palestinian territory on the 29th day of the offensive. Those are your top stories for today. I'm Linda Tamim, and I'll be back again tomorrow with more updates. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.